It was shortly before 2 a.m. on Sunday, January the 27th, 1974, in San Francisco. California was still gripped by the terror of the Zodiac Killer. In fact, just two days later, on January the 29th, the Zodiac would send his final letter. But that Sunday night, there was another serial killer at work. Welcome back to the True Crime Channel inspired by Forensic Art. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more, and let's get into today's sketchy story. At 1.57am on January the 27th, 1974, a 911 call came in reporting a dead body at the water's edge on San Francisco's Ocean Beach. A man called Gerald, a 49-year-old unmarried man who worked in a mattress factory and had immigrated from Canada, had been stabbed multiple times. His left hand had defensive wounds. In his pocket was $21.12 and on his wrist a Timex. Robbery was not the motive. He is the man I am sketching today, but I am doing more of an approximate rough sketch because from reports it seems that his family didn't really want his name out there and um, they didn't really want to be associated with the case which is very sad but I do want to respect them so I won't be mentioning the full names of any of the victims and I will not be drawing an exact representation of Gerald. An unidentified woman found another body at Sprickles Lake in Golden Gate Park on June the 25th of 1974. A man named Joseph, nicknamed Jay, had been stabbed three times. There was blood in his mouth and his nose. He was from Texas and was employed at a club as a drag performer and as a comedian. Police thought it likely that he had driven his murderer to the park himself. A 31-year-old German national and employee of Michelin was the third victim. He was found on July 7, 1974, by an elderly woman who was walking her dog. His death was described by a police officer who had also worked on the Zodiac case as one of the most vicious stabbings he had ever seen. It appeared to police that all three victims were gay and they began to believe that the murders were connected. The Castro was a predominantly LGBT neighborhood in San Francisco and there were many bars, restaurants and nightclubs frequented by the LGBT community. It was a refuge for many and it was an important time for the gay rights movement in America. Harvey Milk had just opened his shop in the city, but many people still harbored a deep hatred for the gay community. Some nights, in the corners of bars and tables, a shadowy figure would sometimes appear, sketchbook in hand, and he would settle down, pick a target, and start sketching. He would show his intended victim the final caricature he had created, and, flattered by the attention, Man after man left with him where he would take them to secluded spots and stab them or slit their throats. He was named the Doodler because of his habit of sketching caricatures of his victims. The fourth victim, a 32-year-old man, was found by a hiker behind a sand dune. He was six feet tall and 148 pounds. He had served in the Navy and he received a commendation medal for saving four men under fire in the Vietnam War. 
he had been stabbed in the heart. On June the 4th, 1975, the fifth victim, a 66-year-old Swedish immigrant, was found on a Lincoln Park golf course by a hiker. He was 10 yards off the trail and slashed across the neck. He had been dead for about two weeks. Two victims attacked at separate times in the same apartment complex who managed to survive their attack gave similar descriptions of their assailants. One victim spoke further with police and that information led investigators to believe that the two cases were linked to the prior five victims. And using these statements, five months after the fifth victim was found in 1975, police were able to create a composite sketch of the subject based on one of the victim's descriptions of this man. Police described him as between 19 to 25 years old, black, lanky, and around six feet tall. Police believed that the suspect lived in the Bay Area, but not San Francisco. And they thought he would come to the city on weekend nights. They believed the killer had a quiet, serious personality, with an upper-middle-class education and above-average intelligence. He might also have been an art student because he informed one of the victims that he was studying commercial art. He also allegedly told victims, all you guys are alike, by which he meant gay men. Thanks to many anonymous tips, police had the license plate number of a suspect's car, and they had even spoken to a psychiatrist who had treated the doodler. The psychiatrist told investigators that the suspect admitted during one session that he had committed the murders. Police believed his motive was that he himself was a closeted gay man experiencing, quote, mental difficulties involving sex, end quote. One man who resembled a composite sketch was taken into custody after he entered a bar and offered to draw one of the patrons. Along with a book of sketches, he had been carrying a butcher knife. He was then booked for carrying a concealed weapon, and then he attacked a homicide inspector during an interrogation, so he was charged with aggravated assault. And though there were a few suspects for this, there was one suspect in particular who police were fairly convinced was the doodler. And from all of the evidence, it seems like they had their man. But the problem was nobody would come forward to identify him. The Associated Press coverage of the case in 1977 quoted police saying that they needed victim testimony to charge the primary suspect. However, victims didn't want to come forward because they didn't want to be publicly outed. Our biggest contact in, uh, that we're working on in, the, in these cases is the ones that are, have been committed south of Market Street and what are known as the S&M bars in that area. And the men are... Uh, visiting these establishments, not only talking to the owners of the bars, but people that frequent the bars. Uh, I know the gay community is well aware that these murders are going on, but we're looking for, uh, primarily I should say, our search has been for someone that may have survived these attacks and haven't come forward and reported it. A well-known entertainer at the time and a foreign diplomat were among three of the survivors who didn't want to come out of the closet by testifying. The doodler may have been responsible for up to 16 or 18 murders, according to some sources. In 2019, police released an age-progressed composite sketch. The reason why I haven't done my own composite in this case is because I think this is probably exactly what the primary suspect looks like today. He is likely still alive, and police just need somebody to come forward and identify him as their attacker. There's nothing in this sketch that would indicate to me that the man in the first composite would today be bald. So the only reason that I can think of that they would have a bald age-progressed version is because they know exactly who the doodler is and he is bald today. There is a reward of $100,000 for information about him that could lead to his capture. Police believe that the doodler was seeing a psychiatrist with the last name of Priest practicing in the East Bay. The 911 caller was also never identified, it seems. So is this the voice of the doodler? Let me know what you think. That's it for today's case. Thank you for watching and see you next time.